we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. White America has had a schizophrenic personality on the question of race. She has been torn between cells, a self in which she proudly professed the great principles of democracy and a self in which she madly practiced the antithesis of democracy. This tragic duality has produced a strange indecisiveness and ambivalence toward the Negro, causing America to take a step backward simultaneously with every step forward on the question of racial justice. In the face of hatred, they pray for their tormentors. In the face of violence, they stood up and sat in with the moral force of nonviolence. Willingly, they went to jail to protest unjust laws, their cells swelling with the sound of freedom songs. A lifetime of indignities had taught them that no man can take away the dignity and grace that God grants us. They had learned through hard experience what Frederick Douglass once taught, that freedom is not given, it must be won through struggle and discipline. Faith. Eve of freedom is spreading in the widest liberation movement in history. The great masses of people are determined to end the exploitation of our races and land. In one majestic chorus, they are singing in the words of our freedom song, ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. Because I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Hello. And welcome to our 2021 MLK program. The video you just watched was prepared by Bullis alumna Daphne Daniels for our 2017 program. In our previous programs, we have strived to honor the legacy of MLK and also highlight his works and his messages and how they resonate to this day. This year is no exception. In this program, we will take the time to honor his legacy and highlight some of his works. We also would like to take the opportunity for some members of our community to reflect on how his messages resonate to this day. We hope you enjoy our program. Thank you. My name is Dylan from the fifth grade class. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was inspired by an activist in India named Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi cared about the people of India. He worked hard to help the Indian people gain independence from British rule in the 1900s. He organized peaceful protests and he inspired people all over the world including civil rights leaders in the United States. Gandhi's ideas inspired Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King read all about Gandhi and even took a trip to India in 1959. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. believed that it was important to avoid the use of violence during protests. Peaceful protests were very important to Dr. King. He wrote that Gandhi was a guiding light for him. 
Dr. King cared about people and wanted to be sure that all citizens were granted civil rights. All citizens have a right to be heard and to protest peacefully. People today still fight for their civil rights. In the lower school, we learn about human rights, children rights, and civil rights. We are inspired by the civil rights movements of the past and present and honor Martin Luther King Jr. today and every day. Hi, my name is Sirius Sano from the fourth grade. Students in the fourth grade read about a specific person from the Harlem Renaissance and created a pop-up card with symbols related to him or her. We also wrote a paragraph about what this person was best known for, the struggles in his or her life, and how their legacy lives on their accomplishments. We learn not only about our own individual, but about the thinkers, writers, poets, musicians, activists, actors, and artists during this amazing time in history. I'm Julian Berdoff, and today I'll be talking about Martin Luther King Jr. When I hear Martin Luther King Jr., I think about his I Have a Dream speech. When I think about his I Have a Dream speech, I think about one part specifically about his I Have a Dream speech. It went something like, I have a dream. One day, my four little children will live in a world where they are not judged by their skin color, but by the content. When I hear equality, I think of equal rights. Um, you can't just limit somebody to one or two things just because the color of their skin or because they're a boy or a girl or they're different from you. So I think of equal rights. When I think of social justice, I think of fairness um, because in this world, we limit people to few things because maybe they're not as wealthy as you or maybe they're not as good as you, but you don't really give them a chance, so you don't know their potential. So I think fairness is a great category for social justice. When I think of Martin Luther King Jr., I think of his I Have a Dream speech. My mind goes straight to this because that speech really showed the type of person he was and the most memorable moment for me personally. When I hear equality, I think that everyone gets treated equally because equal to me means that everyone gets treated the same no matter what, no matter if they look different, speak differently, or have a different opinion than you. Everyone should have the same chances as everyone else. And when I hear social justice, I think that everyone can feel the same way about other people no matter their skin color. You don't have to act a certain way or do certain things around them. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sophia Moore, and I'm here to talk about Martin Luther King. When I hear the words Martin Luther King or the name Martin Luther King, I think of a strong individual who fought for our rights in this country. I think of this reason because he was a civil activist and leaded many peaceful protests. When I hear the words equality, I think of a factor that every functioning society every functioning society or every functioning country needs i think of this because you need equality to be happy you need equality to be motivated and nothing would work if nobody was motivated or happy and lastly social justice when i hear the words social justice i think about opportunities, um, no privileges, and just baseline. Everybody's equal, um, kind of like a quality, but kind of like more of like a deeper string of equality. 
I think of this as also one of the many things that you need to be a functioning society. So that's why I think that answer. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hi, my name is Blake Days. I'm in the seventh grade class at Bullet. And today I'll be talking about some words and what they mean to me. The first word is Monday the King Jr. When I hear that word, what comes to mind is someone that fought for their rights as African American in Alabama. And he led a lot of movement walks and stuff such as that back in the day. The third word is equality. When I think of equality, I think of equal, which means that I'm pretty sure the definition of equality is everyone should be equal. And I feel like that's what a lot of places and countries should have and most have. But like in America, not everyone is equal. And I feel like that's something that we need to work on in America, equality of races and genders and everything like that. The next word is social justice. When I think of social justice, I think that it's basically about everything should be equal. Everyone should have the same rights and the same opportunities as everyone else. And I also think that's something that we should work on in America because depending on your race or your gender, you might not get paid the same or be treated the same even if you have the same job and maybe the same experience and opportunities. And yeah. That's I have to say. Um, thank you all for watching. Bye. Hi, my name is Zaina Crawley, and I will be talking about Martin Luther King Jr. When I hear the word Martin Luther King Jr., I think about what he believed in. He believed that all human beings should be looked at on the content of their character and not the color of their skin. I also think about how he fought. He always fought with love and perseverance, and he never fought with hate and violence. When I think about equality, I think of about everybody being treated equally, no matter the color of their skin, no matter how much money they have, and no matter their religion. When I think of social justice, I think of everyone having equal rights and being treated the same so that they can have the same success and the same opportunities in life. Martin Luther King was a very important man and he shaped our world for what it is today. And although it's not perfect, he made it better. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Martin Luther King Jr. On January 6, 2021, our nation's capital was attacked. Planned out for weeks, Trump supporters decided to storm the capital to pause the progress Congress was making and overturn the results of the 2020 election. What took place that day made me as an American embarrassed, but it also made me feel discouraged as a Black American. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly, Martin Luther King Jr. Over the summer, Black Lives Matter protests were happening to bring justice for those who lost their lives and to fight against racial injustice. In some of these protests, people were tear gas, shot with rubber bullets, and so many other disturbing things. But when there was an attack on a federal building with a lot of lives in danger, major damage done to the building, and many laws broken, the result and consequence was very different. It had me thinking that if it were a Black person, would the response have changed? And the answer is yes. Even though I wasn't there and I had nothing to do with this, I was still greatly impacted by this event. Whatever affects one directly. The Capitol building and many people inside were affected directly. The building with this damage and the people because their lives were in danger. Affects all indirectly. This attack troubled not only me, but millions of Americans, specifically Black Americans across the country, because we all know if that were one of us, the outcome would have been extremely different. 57 years ago, Martin Luther King, along with many others, didn't march on Washington, and he didn't speak his famous I Have a Dream speech so that we can go back to the same cycle we have been in for many years, racism. If Dr. King were alive today, I think he would be let down by how our country is doing. He created an impact so big that Congress decided to pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which made it illegal to treat people differently because of the color of their skin. Yet we're still doing it today. It feels like we're moving five steps back and not five steps forward, like he intended. To Dr. King, on behalf of many Americans, we are sorry to let you down. I want to leave you all with this. Let us all hope that the dark clouds of racial prejudice will soon pass away, and that in some not-too-distant tomorrow, the radiant stars of love and brotherhood will shine over our great nation with all their scintillating beauty. Martin Luther King Jr., thank you. Many people were there. It was the largest amount of people I've ever seen in one place. People of all ages 
in their Sunday's best, eager to hear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, my grandmother once informed me. It was a hot and sunny day, but it seemed as if no one really cared about the weather circumstances. The people just wanted to feel a sense of encouragement and hope that all men and women will be treated as equal, that all men and women will hold unalienable rights, that all men and women will have an equal opportunity to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness under our Declaration of Independence. Although it was over 58 years ago, my grandmother still recalls the events of 1963 as if it happened yesterday. And 50 years later, in August of 2013, once again at the Lincoln Memorial, I was able to experience the same. A powerful moment in American history with numerous people in various ages, black, white, Asian, Indian, the list of races could go on and on. But the one commonality we all shared was the hope for everlasting change in our country. While a country has grown since 1963, a country's battle for inequality is far from over as recent events have shown. So I say to you today, my Bullis family, and as Dr. King once similarly said, that in spite of difficulties and frustrations of the moment, we ho still hold on to a dream, a dream that our nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. A journey is far from over and we must remember that we cannot walk alone. We must come together and lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. So I ask you today, Bullis, what is our dream? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank all of you who have played a role in putting together this morning's important assembly. I'm not sure there's ever been a time in my adult life or in my own personal experience when Martin Luther King Jr.'s message of nonviolent protest has been more righteous and more relevant. Right now, I suspect that we all feel personally impacted by the violence, lawlessness, an insurrection that took place at the Capitol last week with the explicit aim of political change. As deeply upsetting as that was, we can be encouraged that the backlash against this action has been profound. Our democratic institutions have held strong and this great republic will prevail. We must disavow violence. As the Reverend said, in struggling for human dignity, the oppressed people of the world must not allow themselves to become bitter or indulge in hate campaigns. To retaliate with hate and bitterness would do nothing but intensify the hate in the world. Along the way of life, someone must have sense enough and morality enough to cut off the chain of hate. This can be done only by projecting the ethics of love to the center of our lives. And if we should ever doubt MLK's philosophy, all we need to do is to look to his inspiration, the Mahatma Gandhi's lifelong work to free India from the yoke of British colonialism was successfully brought to a conclusion through non-violent protest. The might of the entire British empire was brought to its knees by non-violent protest. Gandhi was right. Nelson Mandela, upon his release from incarceration, was right. And yes, MLK was right. And so, on the eve of the inauguration of the 46th President of the United States and the inauguration of the first woman, a woman of colour, as our Vice President, let's give thanks. Let's give thanks for the teachings and example of Martin Luther King Jr. I have been so looking forward to having many of you back onto campus. Thank you again to all of those that participated and organized in this important assembly. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.